Welcome everyone to today's show, today's episode of Empowering You TV. I'm so excited that you're here today with us. My name is Amy Hutton and I'm your host for this show. I am now in Calgary, Alberta, but I grew up in Pickering, Ontario, which is about 20 minutes east of Toronto. Each episode, you will hear remarkable stories of women who've beaten the odds, risen above all challenges, and are now living their lives full on like the brave, empowered women they're born to be. For more information to be featured on the Empowering You TV show, please reach out to me, amy at inchbyinchempowerment.com. I am booking for the rest of October into November and even December, so let's get you on the show. You never know whose story, or who's with your story, who you're going to help and who you're going to affect. So let's share your message. For today's show, I'm so excited to introduce you to Kimberly Buckler. Now, Kimberly and I have met each other once in person, uh, but we were first connected through Facebook, and she's been a lovely lady to get to know, and I'm very excited to have her here today. But let me tell you just a snapshot of her story of who um, Kimberly is. In 2002, Kimberly Buckler, be Buckler became a certified UC Reiki master and is a strong intuitive. Along with the Reiki treatments, she works with the Akashic Records, Intuitive Readings, Reflexology, Crystal Healing, Business Home Energy and Energy Entity Clearing, Past Life Regression, and facilitates workshops. Kimberly practices energy work in all the treatments that she does along with sharing empowering message that can be a catalyst for change. Oh, I like that word, catalyst. Her book is called The Essence of Who We Are, and it was published in November 2015. She's anxious, anxiously awaiting to have her second book published, the, Essential, the Essentials of Natural Healing, which is hopefully coming out really soon at the end of this year, or maybe it's out already. We'll learn more as we go along. For more information and to about Kimberly, please visit www.spirit-soul-healing.com. Wow, Kimberly, I'm so excited to have you here. How are you? I'm doing really good, Amy, and thank you for having me here with you today. You're welcome. So I know where you are in the world, but um, mm. let's share. How about you share with us where are you? Um, I'm in Cochrane. Um, just outside Calgary, Alberta, so getting close to the mountains um, in the foothills. It's beautiful country. I call it God's country. Um, really grateful to be here. Yay. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I was actually just staying in Cochrane this past weekend. I uh, was at a women's conference and traveling back and forth from Cochrane to uh, Canmore, so it was pretty cool. Oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah. Really neat. So let's dive into some stories, shall we? So what in your life have you overcome? And how about you share your story briefly with us? Um, I'm going to start a little bit from when I was little. Um, two beautiful parents, a mother and father and a brother. When I was eight years old, my mom passed away. Um, she was needed on the other side. Um, uh, and being able to, I had to grow up very fast and very quick. And from what I heard, I looked after my brother quite a bit. And he was a huge blessing. Um, so getting over, you know, understanding, I knew when my mom passed away, she was very sick. And it was much better for her on the other side. And growing up, and then we were faced with a stepmother uh, for about three, four years. Can't quite remember. Um, early teens and um, she was a huge lesson lesson in life and she taught me how not to treat my children mm. so we need to treat our children with respect um, and no yelling and screaming mental abuse physical abuse stuff like that huge lessons from this lady so I'm very grateful for that and mm. when I realized that it took a huge weight off my shoulder so gratitude that she taught me this very young um, I end up raising two beautiful daughters on my own for quite a bit for a few years. It, they were a blessing, both of them. As I raised them, I realized that um, they were sensitive, you know, to products around them, and um, and I needed to learn how to live a very natural and healthy lifestyle. So that was pretty much three of the biggest challenges I had. 
And I realized raising these beautiful little girls, I always needed to be positive, um, to support them all the time, no matter what, I was always there for them. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it went on from there. Yeah. So I think those are the three big things in my yeah. life. Yeah, and losing your mom at such a young age, like before you were 10, that probably shaped a few things um, in your life, I'm guessing. And, and I, I am, you know, I send my sorry, my condolence to, to you on that and then learning and being living with your stepmom and, yeah. and, and getting used to that. So thank you for sharing, Kimberly, your story with us. You're welcome. Now, this question is always fun to ask, and I've gotten a couple different answers with it. If you could change anything in your life that happened to you in your past, what would that be and why or why not? I, it's hard to say. I think, truly, I think I would leave everything exactly as it is. There are a lot of highs, a lot of lows, ups and downs, good times, bad times, times you wish you could have done without, but every part of that is part of who I am today. I learned a lot. I experienced a lot. I don't think I'd change anything. Mm. You sometimes wish things were different. But when I look at the grand, um, grand scheme of everything, everything happened for a reason at the right time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I get asked the same thing. Like, would I change anything that happened in my life to me? And, yeah, things I went through were sucky and crappy, but it made me who I am today as a 40, almost 41. I'm going to be 41 and on Friday um, but uh, you know being a 40 year old uh, lady here growing up in Canada I wouldn't wouldn't change it but, yeah yeah and you've done an amazing job yeah mm -hmm. yeah now Kimberly can you tell me what is your why why do you do what you do today oh there's a lots of whys, <laughs> a lot of whys. the first one was as um, in my late teens, I learned about health, um, what I was eating, and I started to get into a much healthier um, lifestyle and eating much better. And it made a huge difference for me. As uh, my daughters grew up, I um, and their sensitivities to things in the home and products and that, and foods was another thing. As I got, got older, um, as it went along, I also realized, you know, having bad dreams all the time um, and understanding why I had these bad dreams. So that was a big, huge why I wrote my book, The Essence of Who We Are. It was a lot of it was about health and our thinking patterns and how everything correlated and why we need to be really careful and, you know, how we think what we bring into our homes and um, we really need to be here for each other to support each other through all these journeys because mm -hmm. I'd like to now be able to be that support that I didn't have as a child mm. especially with the bad dreams and working with the spirit realm yeah for sure for sure now hearing you talk and your why and I have a funny feeling that this goes into what you do for your business Mm -hmm. so what's your business about and what do you do so my business is called spirit and soul healing um when i first got into it i started practicing the reiki so i got the masters in 2002 about that time I was learning to do readings um a little story behind that but we'll leave it for another time and as i with the readings i learned also that i was a strong intuitive and i didn't realize this um, so I did the Reiki, the readings, and as I went along, I picked up a couple other courses. But I found with the Reiki and practicing the Reiki with clients, I was able to incorporate and learn so much more, more than any teacher could have provided me. One, I learned how to work with the spirit realm. I... Um, learned to do a little bit of mediumship. So when I get this urge to go like this and kiss my client on the forehead, I know there's somebody here with them sharing a gentle message and showing them how much they love them. I got into crystal healing. 
Um, uh, I teach a, a workshop on building your in intuition. So the crystal healing and the building your intuition were both um, requests from students or clients. And when I get a request more than twice, then I'll put something together to help out. So it's been a blessing. I've had a lot of support along the way. And as I go along, I also realize the power of the energy we use and that we need to be gentle and we need to be careful in how we do things. So a lot of the work I mentioned that um, no matter what I do, energy is involved in it. When I'm doing reflexology, I can feel the energy flowing and pick up on the client. When I do readings, the same thing. House clearings, I'm in Reiki mode doing the whole house, during, during that whole, whole hour, picking up imprints and helping spirits cross over, things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's who I am today, and I'm so grateful that I can be me in this lifetime. That's awesome. That sounds like beautiful work that you do. Now, with the clients that you've worked with or helped, do you have a story that you can share or a testimonial of one of your clients who's changed from your business from working with you? Um, I've gotten some beautiful, beautiful testimonies, but what, what came to my mind right away was... Um, a client I had several years ago, and it was quite interesting. When she was on the Reiki table, my body started to go into toxic sweat. So I'm just pouring sweat. And I'm thinking, okay. And I'm asking, you know, where's this coming from? And all of a sudden they heard science lab. And I had no idea what this lady did. And, and um, less information I have, the better. And I asked her, you know, quietly, you somehow around a science lab she goes yeah she's a teacher science teacher I go okay thank you and so I just went off into Reiki mode there and worked with her and at the very end I mentioned I said to her you know I said because I was working with her legs um, at that time I could feel the toxins in her body the, when she first, before she got on the table, she mentioned to me that the doctors could not figure out what was wrong with her. They can't find anything. And it was almost like she had a fictitious disease. And at the end of the session, I said to her, what I would like you to do when you go back to that school, can you please pay attention? If you pick up anything different in that room, a smell, because when I saw the um, science, science lab in my mind, the first thing that came to my mind was the old Bunsen burners. Mm, I remember those. Yeah. Yeah. You still have those in there. And she says, oh, yeah, but they're all shut off. I go, okay, okay, we should be cool then. And, and I said, but when you're in that room next week, Pay attention for any smells, anything really different. And I said, also, there's something. I got an image of a, a doorway on the side. And this doorway is right by your room, but it's between another room. What's in that room? Because whatever in there is, there's something wrong with that. And so she explained to me that in that room was a whole bunch of stuff for the science lab. But a lot of those chemicals should not have been together. Oh, so it was very toxic. Um, it was, it blew me away when she phoned back a week later and she said she had a student uh, teacher assistant helping her that day and she mentioned this to the assistant. So all of a sudden they were in one spot and they got this um, a scent of a really stinky egg smell. Well, they went and got the principal, it was a leak. She's had a gas leak in her science room for year for the time she was working in there. There were other students in that would come in that class and get sick too. Wow. So they found the answer. They turned off the gas. And that's why this beautiful soul was so sick. Mm -hmm. um, the most beautiful part was that she did get out of the school. And from the last time I saw her, she was very healthy and she had a little... So to me, that was huge gratitude. Mm -hmm. And so grateful for being able to share. Yeah. yeah. And, and grateful because if she had, like, had a gas leak, like, that could have been really, really dangerous. And, 
And when you mentioned the egg smell, um, growing up, I was in Pathfinders and we'd go camping at my Pathfinder leader's um, winterized cabin. Mm -hmm. And one thing we would remember smelling, because she had to turn it on, sometimes they turn it on and off, was the gas smell. Yeah. And it sulfur and it smelled like rotten eggs. Eggs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so imagine this poor gal being exposed to this day after day and the other students and them not knowing why they were so yeah. sick at school. Yeah. So um, I, beautiful clients. The big the oil thing I always remember is that they are doing 90% of the time. Doing, I'm sorry, they're doing 90% of the work when they're on that table. Mm -hmm. I have the honor of being able to hold that space and help them shift the energy. Mm -hmm. So it's honoring to be able to do this. Yeah, I, and I, I love energy work. I love body healing work and such. And I can remember being on a couple of different people's tables. Mm -hmm. and, um, haven't been on yours yet, but I remember being on other people's tables and uh, there was one time that I was literally like bo overall body shaking and yeah. my friend who is the doing the work, she's like, you know, it's your body releasing stuff. Just let it like ride it out. Mm -hmm. Keep breathing. You're fine. Just keep your, just keep breathing and your body will eventually stop the shaking. And it did, but it was, it's the weirdest feeling because I wasn't in control of anything. And yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I, I very highly respect and honor yourself and others who do body healing, um, be it Reiki, cranial sacral. Um, I have a friend oh. who does Bowen, Bowen therapy as well. Um, amazing There's, work. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing what we can do with it. So no, this is my life and I love it and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Yeah. So um, Kimberly, how do you stay empowered in your own life? How do you keep going? Um, it's a blessing to know, to have learned what I have learned. Um, the positivity, um, to know that, you know, th we do have ups and downs, even if we're leaving a, la leading a very positive life, but I always try to stay positive and I work and push myself and um, dedicate myself to what I'm doing. And my personal life, the same thing. If things are rocky or if things aren't going right, then I know I have the energy to work with or I can work with my crystals and I know there's ways to come up with answers. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really grateful for what I've learned because it helps me out on a daily basis. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm curious to this this question, and it's what is a book, a movie, or a song, or a quote, or something that empowers you to keep going in your own life? A book, a movie, or song? Hmm. The first, you know what, what got me going was reading a book called Eagle Rosemary. No, Eagle and the Rose by Rosemary Altia. Um, this book, book blew me away for the reason I did not, even when I was 40, I did not realize that we could do energy work, that psychics are for real, <laughs> and we're capable of doing all this stuff. And when I read this book and I realized what we can do, that's what got me going. That's what got me back onto the path of who I really am. Um, what was your question again? <laughs> Sorry. I lost that. That's okay. Just a book or a song or a movie that empowers you to keep going in your own life or yeah. a quote or with the work that you do, maybe there's a crystal that you always kind of gravitate to that keeps you energized to keeps you feeling really good about you or yourself in life. My selenite. <laughs> there you go. So that's one of my crystals I love working with. So yeah, it helps to keep things clear for me and the clarity in that. So I love working with the crystals. But that one book, that was um, a huge eye-opener for me um, right after I read it. Um, I, it was, I was told to read this by a lady that was doing energy work on me. So it got me to realize that, yes, I am a psychic. Yes, I am a healer. And, yes, we can do both. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Kimberly, what's one simple step that our viewers can do to empower themselves? The simple step. Taking one day at a time. One day at a time and starting off for me in the morning, it's thank you for another amazing day. And every morning I try to remember to say that to myself and taking one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the best thing we can do. Yep. Yeah, just go, keep going. As I like to say, inch by inch. Yeah. 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 Just step by step, right? Yeah. 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 Totally. That's awesome. That's a great one. And it's so simple. It's just, it's one of those simple things that people may think, Oh, I have to do big things. I have to do big steps. Well, no, if that's not the way your life works or your brain works, then just do small steps to make it. And we need to, you know, I mean, we really do need to, because sometimes people want to go to from A to Z without Mm -hmm. doing the journey in between. They want um, instant gratification instead of the learning that we have along that path and the experiences and it's like first book the essence of who we are holy doodle bug that was a journey that was amazing journey it started off um um a few months before i started writing it i was in a car accident that car accident was a catalyst for this book mm-hmm. um as I did the book, it was learning that one step at a time, putting it together. The same thing with the second book is, um, it is so close. It should be in print this month. <laughs> I sent in the last um, corrections. It's in book format and everything. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, at first, I was freaking out, thinking, okay, I got two big events coming up this month. I want the book by then. He says, you know, it might not be ready, but that's so mm-hmm. Maybe these two events, I just need to focus on my first book. Maybe. And, uh, maybe that's what it's all about. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And you take one step at a time. And, and then that journey, because sometimes we want to go from A to Z. And but if we control and manipulate everything and we get there so fast without the experiences, what about the other doors that could have opened up for you along the way that you Mm -hmm. forgot to pay attention to? Yeah, for sure. Sometimes we do that. So I know I have no idea what's ahead of me, Amy. (laughs) I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And I'm getting pretty excited. I don't know what's up, but I'm feeling really good about it. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. Now, speaking about um, the future and things like that, what is a message you want to tell the next generation of girls about empowering themselves? So, for example, if you could go back in time and tell your 11-year-old self something, what would that be? To be patient, to listen, to learn. To always go by your gut instinct and pay attention to that. I think we really need to start working with our intuition more. Mm-hmm. more. Yeah, I have a friend of mine, um, Bonnie Earl, who works with uh, women and cultivating their divine feminine. Mm-hmm. And the one thing she talked about at a conference that I was at just in Canmore, um, she talked about that intuition and, and expanding and growing that intuition muscle so yeah that's totally a good one for for girls today is yeah just listen to that little voice in your heart yeah and to also to honor yourself and honor your body and to honor your personal space um we need to be looked after and we need to feel as we're growing up to feel strong and we need to feel that we're safe and we're not going to be violated in any way or abused mm-hmm. and always to stay in our power and um, always be strong. Yeah. Always be strong. Yeah, that's a good one too. Thank you. Who is someone you want to thank who inspires you to be your best self, 
who's helped you when going through a difficult time, if you could write a thank you card to that person, what would it say and who is that person? Oh my goodness. Um, one person that came to mind was a good friend, Jeff. Um, he's been like a brother for several years. Um, he helped me out quite a bit going on to the crystal path. Uh, he's taught me many lessons, some he doesn't know yet know about. Um, but he's taught me many lessons and, and the gratitude that he was there. And he was also instrumental for that book. Mm. He just said, um, with that, after the car accident, I had three bad things happen. And, and I phoned him up. I said, yeah, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And I says, I don't understand this. And he said something and I swore. He said, enough of this, enough of this stuff. Yeah. I said, I need to know what's going on. And he said something and all of a sudden everything clicked with the car, with the spirit realm, everything just clicked. And he said, oh, I think you need to write your book now. <laughs> so, um, I, Jeff, I am very grateful. Thank you for being my brother. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, we've talked a tiny bit about this, but what is coming up that our viewers should know about? When's this? What's about this book? Oh, the second one. Yes. Um, it's called uh, Essentials for Natural Healing. So in a way, it is sort of a, um, a step from the first one. This book is information I've gra gathered over the years. Um, I used to do, well, I do it for my newsletter. I used to have two websites and I would, in the newsletters, I would always put in articles about um, herbs or oils or whatever. And in my, my website now for spirit and soul healing, there's, um, you know, messages from the animal kingdom, the angels, but I also have treatments in there, different kinds of treatments that I do. And also information on different herbs and the oils again. And this book has a lot of this information in. So the book's about all the different, not all of them, because there's so many of them now. I can't believe how many types of Reiki, Reiki classes people have come up with. But it, it explains a lot of the different healing techniques. We have the different food groups in there. We also have the herbs, the oils. Also a section in there, say if you're getting migraines, what can you use for a migraine? Is it a food, is it a mineral, is it a vitamin, is it a herb? Um, it's, um, I was honored a really good friend of mine who read this, um, who's done a lot of reading. I'm not a very good reader. She's done a lot of reading and I, sh I showed her a preview of the book and she was a sweetheart. She said, this is gonna be a household Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well let's not use the word bible but a household book where you must have when i thought about it after amy and because sometimes we get so scared something's not going to work mm -hmm. or ha happen when i looked at when i thought about it when this book comes out it is going to be my go-to book and it's going to be in the size that i can carry everywhere with me oh that's good yeah and there's going to be room in there say when you have your copy you can write your own notes and there are things that you know work well with you too for you too so yeah i'm really excited and it should be in print this month yay mm -hmm. that's awesome so you'll get it by most well, going in print this month so yeah maybe by a little bit after remembrance day is my guess well, that's november yeah so we're in october yeah so i'm praying to god that it's um yeah, um, by the third week of this month. I'd be oh, a very yeah. happy puppy, if not sooner. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Now, now, Kimberly, what's next? Or what's another intention you've set for yourself? So, like, if you could, you know, the, the question, if you could raise or wave a magic wand, what's something else you would want or an intention you've set for yourself? Um, attention... One of the things I would really love to be able to do, Amy, because I'm not a person that's going to go to school for four to six years to learn to become a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist or work in a hospital. 
what I would love and one of my heart desires is to be able to work with people that are scared of the spirit realm. Um, people that are diagnosed as being ADD or schizophrenic or autistic or whatever it is we're being labeled with in this time is to be able to help people out and to help them set healthy boundaries and to also be able to look at the spirit realm in a much healthier way than what we've been shown. Um, that to me is a huge, huge um, dream of mine. I don't know how it's going to happen but it just might end up happening along as I'm promoting my two books. So I know in the next year, there's going to be a lot of promoting of these two books because I want them worldwide. Nice. I'm never going to give up. Yeah, <laughs> I never don't, don't give, give up. up. That's awesome. But that is a huge dream. And I notice um, a lot too. I'm working in a beautiful store in Cochrane and I'm very grateful for it. And with this, I'm able to help people out that are very sensitive as I am. And, you know, learning how we can protect ourselves and look after ourselves so we can cope better in, in public, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. in different places. Mm -hmm. That's so important, too. That's awesome. Now, Kimberly, what's the best way that our viewers can contact you? A website or an email or even a phone number? What's the best way? The best way is really to go through the website to see what I have, um, to have to offer and see what resonates. Um, for some people, you know, you've got to find the right person to work with, that's for sure. The best way is through the website. Um, on the contact page is my phone number and is my email address. Awesome. Um, yeah. So. And, and what's the website name? Uh, spirit dash soul dash healing dot com awesome that's super now guess what we've actually come to the end <laughs> that was too quick <laughs> I know we've come to the end so Kimberly do you have any final words of wisdom that you want to share with our viewers today um I the we need to be patient with ourselves we need to learn how to love ourselves who are who we are no matter what our little glitches are, I've got lots of them. And I think I'm pretty funky and pretty cool person. <laughs> but to always remember, sweetheart, that you're a beautiful soul. No matter where you are, no matter what state of mind being in, within you, you are an absolutely beautiful soul. Mm -hmm. I get to feel that and touch that as I'm doing right now. I have tears coming to my eyes because that beauty and that energy is so strong. And we forget how powerful that love in our heart really is, that unconditional love. So, yeah, we are, please remember, you are a beautiful soul. And I'm so grateful you're here with us today. Awesome. It was such a pleasure having you on. So just thank you again, my dear Kimberly. Uh, just hang on a couple of minutes and I'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> awesome. So everyone, it, that's the end of our show. And it's been such a joy to have Kimberly on our show today. If you would like to be featured on Empowering You TV, just like our guest Kimberly was today, then reach out to me. I would love to feature you on the show to spread your message on a global scale. As I said earlier, I'm booking for the rest of October, November, and even into December. So let's get your message out there. And remember, everyone, inch by inch, you can overcome any challenge that is in front of you. I do believe in you, and I know you can get through anything. Till next time, be brave, be bold, and be yourself. Take care. Bye.